Hey, sportsman, John Bergsman here from the Fisherman's Digest. Join us today in the western UP on Lake Gogebic with Timbers Resort owner Tim Long for trolling for some great Lake Gogebic walleye. Yeah, he's got some weight. He does. You know, we talked about it this morning. We got up here last night up to uh, Bergland, which is the little town that the Timbers is in, right on the shores of Lake Gogebic. And we talked about it. It was 54 degrees late July. And we said, this bite might be slow. We made that first pass, caught nothing. And this bite might be slow for the first hour or two, and it was. But... Now we've got uh, now we've got a nice fish on. We just caught a little keeper. Oh, that might be a smallie. I don't know. It looked like it had an open mouth. No, it's a walleye. Okay, I'm gonna try to keep the fish down. Yeah, it's a walleye. It's just a nice one. Yeah, we like nice ones. Look at that out there. Big old open mouth. Try to keep that uh, rod tip. I got my rod tip under the water. Yeah. Trying to keep that fish down so he doesn't thrash his head around and we lose him. Yeah, this is it's a nice pretty fish. decent fish. Yeah, and he's only one hook. You can yep. see him right there in this beautiful tannic water yep. of Lake so Ogebic, and this is a beauty. This is what you got to do is keep the fish down. You do. If he thrashes at all, he's gone. Yeah, I'm going to bring him up. Here he comes. There wow. you go. What a beautiful Lake nice. Gogebic walleye. Nice Tim. fish. Yeah. That's a beauty. Yeah, that's a beautiful fish. Nice. Awesome fish, nice. Tim. Get right in here. There you go. Keep reeling, keep reeling, keep reeling. Yep. Keep reeling. This is a dandy, too. It's given, definitely giving me some resistance. Keeping the rod tip down. Tim showed you on that last big fish. You got to be ready to plunge your rod tip. The last thing you want with walleyes, especially these slow troll inland lake fish. Oh, nice fish. Yeah. Real nice fish. Yep. Is to, is to break the surface and uh, risk losing them. Tim, that's the second super high quality fish. Just show that one off. And we'll talk before Tim releases that. We're not going to keep these fish, but those are super nice, nice. fish. Oh, 19. Oh, 19. That's our second. The last one was maybe 20 even. It was, yeah. He was a little, little heavier stouter than, even than that. A little heavier than this one. So I'm going to show you what we're looking at. When we're looking at our Garmin here, uh, this is where we set up. We had a fish almost immediately. So having that little plot trail there is really good for us. What you'll see here is just groups of fish holding in that 15-foot range. But if you'll look close, you'll see lone fish right there at 10. There's another one right there at 15. And what's happening is when we get into this more blank screen, like right there, it seems like all of our fish we're catching, we're not catching when the screen is loaded with bait pods. It's when you see that individual bait pod with a lone fish by it. That's the ones that I think we've been catching because all of our bites have come when that screen has been basically pretty blank. And uh, at first, uh, we thought it was a little different. I think what's happening is is that our baits are standing out because they're not just buried in a mass of bait fish down there. Our baits are more able to be picked out by the walleye. So if you look again, there's a there's another group of uh, maybe one or two walleyes just holding right there in that 15 foot zone. There's one at 10 foot right there, and there's another one. There's a couple more. So. You're seeing them really where the screen is blank, where there's not a lot of bait pods. You're seeing a lot more individual walleyes. 
When we see that on our screen, that's when we're catching fish. The Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Crestliner, forged with strength, defined by durability. Mercury Marine, go boldly. And Motor Guide. Yep. I don't know. I don't know, but we'll don't check. Don't think it. so? I think so. Yeah, maybe. There's a fish. I don't know. I think you this were one, on an this, inside this board, turn. This board pulls weird too. I don't know why that. Excuse me. No? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, it just, it was pulling funky. A little guy. It's yeah, but it'd mess your setup. Stand down, yeah. Oh, it's a nice northern. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, he, he wasn't even fighting. He clocked it. That's what I said. He clocked it, and then you said, no, there's nothing there. Here, Tim. This is the average uh, northern for Lake Ogibic. 20, 24. They gotta be 24 to keep. I'll tell you what, though. From a perspective of, uh, of quality of no fishing pressure, this lake has got very low fishing pressure. Swimming with me. There, now he's starting to get a little bigger. We like bigger. Nice walleye. Yeah, we like big girls. Yeah. Tip down. I'll hold him. Lift it up. Boom. Little 13, 14 incher, but in Gogebic, that's a walleye sandwich. I know to a lot of people at home that doesn't look like a big fish, and it's not, but it, on Gogebic, it's a keeper, and a lot of people come and. Yeah, you you're know, allowed to keep two of those fish two of those 13 to 15 inch fish. And We're not going to keep anything, obviously. We're going to let them go. But uh, we've been letting these go all day to grow up. But that's an example of what's to come on Gogebic. And uh, so talk about that legislation where we're allowed to keep, uh, keep walleyes that are 13 to 15. How many can you keep of that sub 13 inches? Uh, each individual is allowed to have five fish. Uh, and you are allowed to keep two fish in that 13 to 15 inch range. Okay. I refer to them as shorts. And then that person is allowed to keep three fish over 15 for a total of five. Or you can have all five over 15. You don't have sure. to keep those shorts. But you may you if ha you're having a tough day. Right. But you're individually keeping track of your five fish. You can't group fish and, and, and just, you know, keep, John and I couldn't keep four shorts if he caught all four of them. He's only allowed two, I'm allowed two. Yes, I got you. Know, you. You, have to, you have to fish individually, so it's not group fishing. And if everyone does it the way it's designed, uh, things work. If, 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 if the fishermen, if the anglers, are over harvesting, you know, we're gonna see a problem in a couple of years. Right. So but right now right it's now still it's, holding up. It's 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 working well. So I think that um, sometime in the near future, I know we've had some discussions about it and uh, they'll probably let this legislation go. I think we're in year number three. They'll let it go for five years and then they'll reconsider uh, changing the slot size or size limit back to 15. So whenever we go trolling, part of our system fishing includes our Trax Tex rail mounted rod holder system. Now we're using uh, Tim's rods today because we don't do a heavy emphasis. The biggest thing is that you got to have a good dependable line counter reel to be able to mimic it. You hear Tim and I talking about that, that was 55 back. That's 55 on the line counter. That's how much distance we're letting out to the lure. And whenever you have a system of fishing and it involves trolling, having a line counter reel is absolutely imperative. You have to have it in order to recreate the circumstance that caught you the fish. 
And right now, these rod holder, this is a quad bank of rod holders, and it's mounted on my six foot rail mount. Uh, what's cool about these is they've got an entry point cut right in here so that I can take this off or I can slide it forward, add a, add a high diver, add, a, add my downrigger in the rear, and a low diver right here. And literally in five minutes, I can convert this simple six foot rail mount into a complete salmon rig. Now today, because we don't use divers, we're only fishing 20, 21 foot of water for walleyes. We're just using the quad bank of trees. We've got three guys in the boat, so we can fish two rods a piece. What I like about this is if you had that fourth guy in the boat, you can still use the same bank just by popping this pin, laying it out. Now I can put another rod out there. It's quick, it's simple. When I go to stow it, I just pull these, pull them all in a row, unscrew these two pins, slide it out, stow it in my floor compartment for the next time I go trolling. Traxtex rail mounted rod holder systems. Absolute versatility, high end quality. The Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Strike King Lures, tie one on. Lose, feel the difference. And Wave Pro, best ride on the water. Nice fish. Yeah. Guess, guess, yeah. guess what color it is. Green and white. <laughs> guess how many feet back it is. Yeah, 55. <laughs> See that green roof cabin right there in the background? Tim and I came in here to set up to take an out troll. The last nice one we got was literally, Tim got it immediately, immediately, or I got it immediately when we turned to go out. We just got back in here. You just swooped in and said, Maybe I'll bump against that break before we could even get there. Bingo. Another nice fish. This when, is heavy. Yeah. When you troll, having your Garmin on and being aware of marking your spots where you would immediately when the board goes back, hit the mark, the waypoint mark, because even on an expansive lake like Gogebic, 13,000 acres, you still have little areas, maybe football field size areas that are holding active walleyes. Tim and I have been searching relentlessly to find those little areas today. This may be one of them. This is fish number two out of one little area. And the minute we got back to it, boom. Now when you're taking off these offshore boards, the key is Tim's back away from me. I'm gonna reach way out. I'm gonna lift the line up a little bit and help the board up as he reels. Keep reeling. Now I'm already off the front clip. He keeps reeling, boom, I'm free. You don't wanna stop reeling. When you stop reeling, that's when you risk, right Tim? Losing that fish. Hey sportsmen, for today's Tackle Box, we've got a good selection of crankbaits that work really well. Now I've got a lot of crankbaits that I use in open water inland lake circumstance. So let's take you through the setup and also some of my favorite cranks. The setup is simple. I use a Mr. Striper, it's a loose, actually it's a striper rod, a 7.6, but this thing has the perfect action. I fish with a lot of trolling rods, this loose striper is an awesome trolling rod for walleye fishermen. Now, I just put any old line counter reel on. You know, as long as it's a good, reliable reel, that's cool. Now, the real key to this is the type of lures you use. So take a look in front of me. We've got a nice selection of crankbaits. Typically, early in the year, I'm gonna start with square bills. Now, these KVD 1.0 and 1.5s are gonna be great on structure, running sand, running gravel points, running shallow structures less than six feet deep. Now when I'm going from six out to 12, we're gonna go ahead and move to the bonsai shad, and this is a lucky shad. This is one of my favorite baits for inland lake fishing less than 12 feet. Now, on this episode, we were fishing suspended fish, and so that would take you to the banana shad or the Berkeley flicker minnow. Now, we had really good success on the flicker minnow in the middle of the day, and it ended up putting a ton of good fish in the boat. But don't be afraid of fishing 
different circumstances at different times of the day. Early in the morning, run structure, sand and gravel points with the 1.0 and the 1.5 or the lucky shads. Middle of the day, run suspended baits like the banana shads, the bonsai shads, or the Berkeley flicker minnow. It'll put a lot more walleye in your boat if you stay versatile. The Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, leaders in trolling technology. Trax Tech, the ultimate fishing system. And Garmin. Well, I said, why don't we do a slow pull? We'll go right over that coordinate. Well, I did. And I mean, I was reeling this thing in, and that, like you said, Tim, I think these fish follow, and I think that directional and speed change triggered that fish, and this is a good fish. Okay. He really hammered it. It was like, whoa. I had one of those yesterday, too. I couldn't believe it. I'm just going to coax it easy, Tim. Yeah. Don't want to lose him. This is a good fish. It's no, uh, it's no 15 or 16 incher. I can tell you that. Like I say, I think this, I think this fish was 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 looking at it when I picked my board up and just started to reel it. Yeah, following and that, it. And that surge of, uh, surge of speed, and I I started to pull that lure away from him, and uh, whoa. Down, right? This is a really good fish, Tim. We're gonna get to hopefully show you a little bit of what Gogebic is really capable of. We've oh, I see him out there. He's a big oh, one. Yeah. That's a big one. Nice. T big walleye. Yeah. Big walleye. Big walleye. Got him. Yeah, Tim. <laughs> Pink lemonade. Pink lemonade. We just put a second one out there, and we're trying to be reactive as we can be. Let me grab that fish and just hold him right up for you. That's uh, Tim. I mean, just that's awesome. he was still barely hooked. Yeah, but that's one, an one awesome little fish. And, a little and bit he's of slack gone. And he's gone. And he's gone. Exactly. So the way the way that you you kept tension on that fish exactly. all the way in. But a beautiful, beautiful Lake Ogebic walleye. Well, thanks for joining us in the kitchen today again with Chef Grant. We've got a really fun recipe and a unique twist on walleye. And what we've got here, Grant, you introduced me to is this basic hash that you always seem to do as a side. Today we're going to kind of use it as a base to our walleye and do something real unique with our walleye. What's in this hash that you make for us? All right, well, I've chopped up zucchini, squash, mushroom, red onion, and uh, some red potatoes that I pre-cooked and then just sliced up and thrown in here too. And that's all gonna cook together. It takes like five minutes to cook it up. And we're gonna cook that in oil, butter, and garlic salt. Sounds great. And while Grant's cooking that hash, I'm going to take some walleye that we've got right here, uh, some thicker back strips. Now, a lot of people I know, I'm from the Great Lakes, and so we catch Lake Erie walleye, and at times, you know, you get those five, six pounders. Because they're clean fish, you can still keep them and eat them. One of the unique ways that we use it is we're going to go ahead and slice those back loins that we filleted off into like scallop sized medallions. Mm -hmm. We're going to pan saute them in olive oil and butter with a little bit of garlic salt and some Italian seasoning and then we're going to service it in the end by putting the hash down as a base and laying our walleye medallions on top. And I'm going to do the same thing over here, add a little bit of butter to some olive oil. And why do we do that? You know, we've had that question asked me before, why do we put butter and olive oil together? One of the reasons is, is because you get a lot less burning when you mix olive oil and butter. You see with these loins, I'm just dicing the loin up in like a scallop sized piece. You don't want to crowd the fish. You want to have enough fish to cover the bottom of the pan, but you don't want to have them laying on top of each other. Make sure you don't be, uh, don't be shy with the spices because the, the walleye is really mild and it's really basically the only flavor you're going to be adding is this little dusting of Italian spices and the garlic salt. 
And then basically you treat those grant like scallops, correct? You're just yeah. going to hot fry them. That's the mistake yep. people make. They, they cook it too slow and too low, right? Yep, just mix it all up. And that, honestly, that'll take five, min five minutes max. Well, Grant, another great recipe. Looks like your hash turned out fantastic. Our scalloped walleye looks great. You know, this is such a simple recipe. I mean, it's two pans. It's five minutes, literally, yep. from start to finish. I mean, this is a quick, easy recipe. If you just I think, cut, if you, even if you just cut one walleye, Yeah, and that's the other up, thing. You could, you could lay a whole walleye fillet right over top of that hash, and it would be great. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Hopefully you take some of these tips from our tackle box and from our time on the water and try out Lake Ogiebic in the western UP. It's an awesome fishery. It'll put a lot of smiles on your face. Visit the area. It's a year-round fishery. We'll be coming to you next year from the ice and with jumbo smallmouth bass. Make sure you catch those shows. And until next week, I'm John Bergsman with the Fisherman's Digest. Thanks for joining us. Closed captioning brought to you by WavePro. Best ride on the water online at waveproshock.com.